All right, everybody, well, welcome back to another x Gaming video. x here, and yes, another episode of the Salty Batch Files depicting the fact that Xbox fanboys are coping, and we have a little bit of uh, coping from the PC elitists themselves, so there is definitely some good content to go over here. So, without further ado, let's go ahead and jump to it. All right, so like I was saying, we got a lot of good content to go over here. A lot of salt for the Salty Batch Files this edition, of course. Let's start with our favorite one. Let's jump right to it. Not our favorite one. They all seem to be my favorite one because they just all provide such great content. But first, starting with RTX Curator, newly reformed because he's no longer an Xbox Curator because PC is the way to go. So, I am 100% biased as Starfield is my favorite game, but the way I see it is the truth of the matter is, it's a misunderstood masterpiece. <laughs> a misunderstood masterpiece. That's what we're going with right now? Okay. Okay. Time will be very generous to it, unlike almost anything released this generation. It's not trying to be something it's not. I didn't want to pull this down and go for it further because it's just a bunch of nonsense still. I, uh, you know, again, for the sci-fi folks out there that just truly love it for what it is, for sure. Um, but even I can't go back in some of my, um, you know, preferred games that may not be on a certain level. I'm not going to go back and be like, it's... It's misunderstood. That's why uh, the general consensus uh, populace, uh, whatever you want to call it, <laughs> is not on board with the game. What are we doing here? A misunderstood masterpiece. A misunderstood masterpiece would be a game, in my opinion, like Days Gone, that was only hindered by the bugs and the negative critical reception from journalists that got the, you know, pre-patch game that they were able to play and review and play test. Um, that being said, you know, again, that's also an opinion on the piece that maybe some still didn't like Days Gone, but as a general consensus, most people that played that game, especially after the early on patches that fixed a lot of the issues, which I honestly didn't have much, everybody loved it. As opposed to Starfield, it's a bore fest, it's a snore fest. Go stack up your potatoes elsewhere, buddy, because this is not a misunderstood masterpiece. Let's uh, keep going here. So we got, of course, our favorite catfish, though, uh, Extension, which is, of course, Andrea Piccinini, a.k.a. Joseph Cruz, uh, still putting up the charade, but uh, not as hard as the female persona, but they still claim that. Uh, after they tried to hate on Starfield and Indiana Jones for graphics, now they are bragging about a PlayStation 5 exclusive with PS3 graphics. No wonder why actual PS users are choosing Sea of Thieves instead. Yes, because Sea of Thieves definitely takes the graphical prowess of current gen consoles like the PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series S to a whole nother level. That's what we want to compare it to. You couldn't even do the dig right. You couldn't even get a better comparison to show. That being said, uh, absolutely does this not look like a PlayStation 3 game. Um, and honestly, if it did, that's a testament to PlayStation 3. Because PlayStation 3 had great graphics and great games that showcased those that could tap into the cell processor. Wasn't very many, but those that it could. And it ran really well with a lot of those games. Now... That being said, as you can see in the screenshot below, they pick and cherry pick what those screens will look like, so keep that in mind, but still, it does not look like a PlayStation 3 game, and this is just basically a salt post that they're upset that PlayStation gets yet another exclusive game to their ecosystem. Go figure. Let's continue. <laughs> but uh, as we so go through there, um, we want to go over the fact that if you haven't heard, there is... Pretty hard speculation, pretty much almost confirmed from everybody but Sony themselves that there is going to be a PlayStation 5 Pro. So Cold Eastwood here, 16 T-flops equals 599 USD. I'm excited to see the AI frame and resolution uh, generation. Uh, so clearly a salty post here that is absolutely incorrect, misinformation, assuming a price point. He has no idea this newly other reformed PC person that is leaving the Xbox 
hardware space behind, supposedly, and playing mainly on PC, now gets to dictate and spread this misinformation even further. Let me show another quick example of why this guy is totally not a paid shill or something like that. So the other one we have here, of course, which is kind of crazy, he's, uh, out of all the games they have to play right now, he's reverting back to, as you see, had a great session of Fallout 76. Yes, he's reverting over to Fallout 76 because that's how dry their system is. I don't know the last time Fallout 76 crossed my mind, and I enjoyed my time, honestly, with it in the beginning. As bug-ridden as it is, that's bug Thesta for you. And they had a lot of issues, but I honestly enjoyed it at first. But it just, you know, it's it's just not it, right? So anyway, it's good to get back home and see West Virginia. Then you got good old P3 himself, Phil Spencer. Kind of looks like I'm stealing your stuff. I appreciated the use of your workbench. Hashtag Fallout 76. <laughs> Oh my gosh, and then of course Ricky tagging on, you know you've made it when the man himself, the man himself that everybody hates right now because of putting their first party games elsewhere like PlayStation and Nintendo, uh, comments on your posts. Yep, this isn't the first time that he has, this isn't the last time that he will. Colt Eastwood is a genuine paid shill. He will say he's not paid. He gets paid in one way, shape, or form, whether is shout outs like this to make him seem more relevant, whether he gets review codes, whether he gets flown down to go ahead and test some games for early access, whether he gets this, that, and the other. That doesn't necessarily mean he's on a payroll of getting paid bi-weekly or monthly or anything like that. He is paid in an absurd amount of ways, and this just consi consistently confirms that piece of it. So just kind of wanted to share that with y'all, and I'm sure he's just punching air right now. This guy's just punching air at the fact that there's a PS5 Pro. Um, <laughs> pretty awesome. Let's uh, let's uh, take a moment here and bring up our good friend. Oh no, it's Alex because he he's never wrong. By the way, ever ever. Um, it's been great. He's been deleting posts like crazy since his PlayStation uh, Pro news has been breaking. But here we have Michael T stating, "When the wood hides the trees," with the Spider-Man GIF, of course. So Alex posted, and the cycle never ends. PlayStation fanboys now think the PS5 Pro is equivalent to a 4080. Wooly Gamer here, a fine gentleman, goes on to state, you needed more than a 2070 to match the PS5 with Death Stranding. Despite the modular level, the PS5 GPU being close to a 2070, games like Death Stranding Director's Cut push close to the parity with a 3070 on a PS5 well above its weight. This is this is true. I'm not a hardcore PC dude. I don't know the hardcore tech aspects of everything, but this this is your genuine and general consensus, right? This is what most gamers, most, you know, even average tech po folks will understand. He goes on, you're coming at this from a modular hardware perspective. Where he is, most people are coming at this from a game's utilization of the hardware, be it modular or in the PS5 or PS5 Pro's case, the sum of its parts. Again, this is correct, generally speaking. At NXG has multiple times broken this down. PS5 can vary from a typical 2070 rig to close to my own 3070 rig's performance based on the game's utilization of the hardware. Again, this is true. This is why the ROI value proposition of a PS5 Pro will most likely be market disruptive. Whether you like it or not, you would need a disproportionately higher performance PC at a modular level to run Death Stranding 2 at parity with a PS5 Pro. A 2070 couldn't match a PS5's performance with the first game after all. Links the YouTube piece of it, right? And then as he quoted, because Nib is who he, uh, I have some of the stuff, I just didn't want to share it yet had an interaction with him, oh no, it's Alex, and he deleted it because of that. Then came back around and said that wasn't the case why and came up with this other bull crap because that's what he does is he sits there and backtracks and tries to cover those tracks and stating he meant something else or that's not what this meant. It's nonstop. So he would say, holy false equivalence, Batman, or equivalency, or whatever you want to want to state at that point. But he did say that. And so that piece of context is missing, but just so you know, that's what that's pulling from is, yes, Alex deleted some stuff because he sounded like an idiot. <laughs> he wouldn't have deleted stuff if he didn't mess something up, uh, evidently, right? So 
I thought that was a good gotcha moment for him because he seems like he never gets those and more people need to hold him accountable. He's a, supposedly a main PC person, but he's never held to the action of his words. And he really doesn't know what he's talking about most of the time when it comes to that stuff. He does quick Google searches off the sides and requires other people from outside to feed him information. He naturally does not know a lot of this stuff. I'm sure he's going to find this video, he's going to pull from it, and he's going to do what he does and flip things. I don't care. Go ahead. Do what you got to do. I'm posting the factual statements. Take from it what you will. What I'm stating is factually correct. And as we continue to go on, we'll move over here. So speaking of the PC elitist side here, I did a quick post that was funny. It's just a meme. As you can see here, most PC dudes right now crying. And this, this meme's been around for a while. PC is better than PS5. But is your PC better than a PS5? Will Smith, oh my gosh, right? If you've seen iRobot, you probably remember that scene pretty well of what it actually depicted to. So this guy, as you can tell, I am not crying. Load a spreadsheet on your console. Well, folks, let's pack it up because I did not realize that my PlayStation 5 or Xbox Series S or X could not load an Excel spreadsheet or a Google Doc spreadsheet Oh man, what am I going to do? I really wanted to fire it up and get my spreadsheets going. You know, that's crazy. I, I really didn't know. Checkmate, sir. I have no comeback for that. Uh, I really just didn't realize the benefit of that. What are we doing? We're talking about gaming. What are you bringing up a spreadsheet for? What are you going to say? I don't have Microsoft Teams on my Xbox Series X that I don't have PowerPoint on my Xbox Series X or PS5? What, why are we using computer applications <laughs> as a way to try and defend you not being salty about the specs of a PS5 Pro potentially being the specs that were given to us? What are we doing here? I just wanted to share that with you. And as you can see over here, um, it's it gets a lot of traction. This one did, probably my highest traction I've ever had at the time that I did the screenshot of it, it saved it 7,462 likes as opposed to 241k views, right? So this, this went through the algorithm or something, but a lot of salty people in those comments, man. I could probably make a 25 episode um, stream of, of going over all the salty people there. So uh, kind of crazy. Just wanted to share that with you here. Let's continue to go on. Jay Dook here. Jay Dook, <sighs> if you bought a PS5, <clears throat> pardon me, if you bought a PS5 within the past year and plan to also buy the rumored PS5 Pro later this year, you would have been much better served spending that 1000 on a PC. Shrugging the shoulders emoji. Yeah, so here's something you don't understand, my guy. Um, we don't know how much the PS5 Pro will be. We can all speculate right now. I think it can be anywhere from $600 to $750. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if it could be higher, depending. I don't know. I don't know. I don't think it's going to be $1,000. That'd be crazy. Um, that would not benefit well. I think $750 would be out of the range, too. So I truly feel like it's going to be around six to six fifty. dollars um, If it's higher than that, we might have some problems. That being said... Better served buying a $1,000 PC. Why? Like, this this isn't for everybody. You can still be just fine with your PS5, folks. That being said, if I wanted to, and I do, personally I want to, because I like that stuff, if I, if I get a PS5 Pro, and it's, let's, for context sake speaking, $650, um, I trade in or I sell off Facebook Marketplace or eBay or wherever, and I sell my console for at least, and it's a disk drive, $400, $300, $350. You minus that, minus the $650, we're still, you're still coming out pretty well. And that, that system's still going to last a very long time, all things considered. And again, it's plug and play. You're ready to go. So this $1,000 argument is kind of insane. I, I mean, you're going to... If I'm going to spend $1,000 on a PC... Personally, I'm going to spend another thousand dollars and make sure this is the most beefed up, coolest looking looking rig that I have possible. And even then, I'm probably going to have to spend more, but I'm going to put as much in there as I possibly can. So, 
personally speaking, I think $1,000 is a pretty good entry point, and that's even if you know what you're doing putting the thing together yourself. Having a box one or having someone else do it for you is gonna run you even higher. Not gonna get on this tangent, but you see what I'm saying here. So another salty person like upset that there's even a PS5 Pro. And then Reforge here, not being salty, I just wanted to post this up here stating his thoughts on there on the PS5 Pro. Why am I seeing so much negativity? Well, I just kind of wanted to answer that and state that, well, it's because of a lot of the PC elitists like we've been talking about in today's episode, as well as the Xbox fanboys very upset because Phil Spencer himself and others stated, we're not doing a mid-gen refresh anymore. If we do another console, it's going to be next-gen period. So they're going to have more FOMO. The Xbox fanboys will be. The PC elitists are upset because it's closer and closer to the rigs they currently have. And again, just like the meme that I posted and why they're all upset. If you really didn't care, <laughs> if it really didn't affect you, and you truly are on this mountain of you your have a beefy rig, I'd just move on. That This meme meant nothing. That's all I'm saying. It meant nothing. So for you to backtrack, that either means A, you're lying, or you have some competency issues and needing to basically back that up for yourself. What am I talking about? It's kind of like the same thing when you have a truck and you see it and it's raised super high and you get a dude that's like four seven popping out of the driver's side pet seat. That's kind of the that's kind of what you get there. That's kind of what you say you're compensating for something, right? That's what's going on there. That being said, um, I know this is gonna make the video a tad bit longer, but let's go ahead and share two quick videos here let's start with the first one right here insider gaming corroborates what moore's law has said i find this pretty exciting that we could be getting our first next gen piece of hardware or mid-gen refresh and then i imagine that xbox will follow <laughs> Now with uh, Destin here, that's great. He tries to act excited, right? Tries to act excited and then has to turn around and try to do a plug-in. The Xbox is sure to follow. No, they're not sure to follow. We're not even 100% sure they are going to do another hardware system for next gen. It's in the works, but that doesn't mean they don't pull it and say, look, we're just gonna lose a lot of money this way. We don't know the aspect of it. Do I feel that they will get one more generation? Yes. Are they gonna do a mid-gen refresh? No. Um, so we'll see what happens if that new final gen system, when it does happen, comes out. Doesn't matter how much of a beast this thing's gonna be. If it doesn't sell well, see you later. The first party games are still coming to other platforms, whether they come out with another gen system or not. But that being said, if this next gen system doesn't sell well, and if their c games continue to come out at least even a year after to other platforms, it's, I don't see that selling well at all. It's not gonna happen. It's not gonna happen. One final video here real quick. I think this is great. This is Jez and his other partner on the podcast finding out in real time about the PlayStation 5 Pro and Tom stating the specs and that it's a thing here we go he just changed the title releasing holiday 2024 originally he had holiday 2025 now i just refreshed it and in everything's changed to 2024 Ipo. so Ipo. Yeah. coming out this year happens so there you go there you go there you have it and microsoft's probably not going to have a response to that i think so yeah, so... How do you feel about that? How do you feel mm -hmm. about that? I mean, I would mm. want Xbox to make one. I've always said that. And Super uh, duper all singing dancing. Yeah, I wonder how this, how much thing this, how much is it going to cost? They're still selling the PS5 for 500 bucks. Yeah, it's kind of interesting, isn't it? Hmm. Very interesting. How does chat feel about this? Yeah, that's the chat. That's the peeps. That's the peeps, because it is going to be presumably quite expensive. I would have thought. Yeah. No, I mean you would think so. But how do you reconcile all that stuff? I don't know. 
I guess uh, time will tell. Mm. 2024. Yep. I'm just cur- I'm I'm curious on the price on that bad lad. Considering they're running the PS5 at 500 still, that that thing coming at 600 plus. I don't know. I don't know, man. I kind of I want Microsoft to have an option, you know, to upgrade to that matches that. Mm-hmm. But it's probably not going to be this year. I would presume it, like if they are doing that, it'll probably be next year. Um, but who knows, man? Maybe they just won't. Yeah, I doubt it. Maybe they'll just skip straight to next gen. We need to get Tom just to leak the specs of the next Xbox in two years. Yeah, he should. Yeah, he should do that. You know, come on, Tom. You, you got to get to work on the Xbox stuff. Yeah, man. All right. So, uh, yeah. All right. So again, I mean, it makes me chuckle. I watch them right back before I do these. And it just makes me chuckle because it's just like the, the sheer amount of disappointment in their, their voices of like, what do we do? Oh, it's another thing added on. It's another thing added on to the already damaged ecosystem in the hardware specs of things, right? It, it is just damaging nonstop. So when you have these people that are constantly trying to damage control like Jazz and these others... And they, they try to make sense of the reality of it, but they can't. And then they and then they, they gather themselves and they get back on and they're back to hyping Xbox and everything Xbox and the games and the hardware. And then you have this stuff happen again. It's like, oh, I mean, it really does seem like an abusive relationship mentally. It is crazy. I just can't imagine. Again, I go. I know I'm a PlayStation preferred player. I am 100%. There's a reason behind it. I don't have an issue if you choose to play on Xbox or PC or Nintendo Switch as your primary. I don't care. I'm posting facts. I'm stating the facts here. And a lot of folks are like, oh, it's opinionated. No, it's facts. I prefer PlayStation because they've been the most consistent. They are far from perfect. Their refund policy sucks. Absolutely sucks. Most recently, back with Horizon Forbidden West, they try to get away with making you pay for the upgrade path when they said they weren't going to. So the fans had to have a little bit of a backlash ceremony here, make them hold held to their word and they finally reversed it, but two couple shady things there. And yes, we can go back to the hack and how that was handled and all that, but you know, they learned from it. They grew, they had to get an infrastructure, they did this and that, you know? I'm not giving a pass for it, but they learn from it. And then, you know, again, yeah, they have some things that suck about them. No corporation is great. They're not your friends. This is on record multiple times of me stating that I'm not saying that Sony can't do anything wrong. I'm saying they're most consistent for doing the things that I enjoy correctly. Am I wrong? No, I'm not. You can get upset and say that it is not correct, but... They consistently give out the quality games more often. They consistently innovate with their controllers the best, and I feel their controllers continually get better and better and better. Their software is just leagues above anybody else, in my opinion. That part is an opinion, because I can't make you like Ghost of Tsushima more than Pokemon, if you're a big Pokemon fan. I can't make you like God of War 2018 more than Gears of War if you're a hardcore Gears of War guy. So your difference is going to be that difference of mine as far as what you prefer in that aspect. But you do have to subjectively look, and this is just a quick TED talk, I'm sorry. You do have to, you know, subjectively look at the competition or any game out there, period, and realize that the quality is there. Just because you like Gears of War better, just because you like Pokemon better, or Super Mario Sunshine, or Odyssey, or whatever, or Breath of the Wild, or Tears of the Kingdom, or Halo Infinite, or whatever the case is, whatever your favorite go-to is, you still have to subjectively look at the competition at other games and be like, is Ghost of Tsushima an amazing game? Regardless if it's for you or not. Yes, it's an amazing game. Is Horizon Forbidden West graphically amazing and has a tremendous open world? All things considered, absolutely. God of War 2018 and Ragnarok, are those phenomenal games and great storytelling? Is everything great about those games, even if it's not for you? 
Yes, it is. Again, Sony and PlayStation consistently offer that quality in the gaming sphere. Period. That's why I prefer them. Again, I don't care what any of you play. If you have a different preference on system, I don't care. I post facts. I state facts. If it's an opinion, I will tell you it's an opinion. I get a lot of this back and forth. Just kind of wanted to clear that up. But I do want to end the video there before this goes on and on. I appreciate everybody. Hopefully you enjoyed all the content, all the stuff posted, the actual facts, not doctored, not opinionated, facts being posted. I appreciate it. And again, thank you all so, so much. Your every like, comment helps out the algorithm. Would love to hear from me down below. Of course, if you haven't already, definitely consider subscribing, helping out a small content creator like myself. And that being said, just remember, don't be a salty batch. And we'll see you next time on the next X-Vault Gaming video. Take care.